So, in these recordings, we are going to demonstrate how to actually build the part which is very similar like the part for the Certified SolidWorks Professional Part 1. And we will build it by building the two bosses and then using the multi-body techniques. So, we have first developed this sketch. Very simple sketch starting from a center line at the coordinate origin and using maximizing the use of the relationship and now we are going to revolve the sketch features revolve boss space and we'll just select the sketch and because of how it was dimensioned how it was designed it will immediately turn into the boss so this will be the left side of our piece now we are going to create the second revolved body and the second revolved body we will need to distance from the center line from here on a front plane at eight inches and then it will be just a very simple cylinder which will be with a five inches high and three inches in outside diameter with a one and a quarter inside diameter so let's place the sketch again we will place that sketch on the front plane let's look at it I'm going to place the center line collinear with the coordinate origin vertical going to be sure that this one and the coordinate origin are collinear point one and point oops yeah point one and this point here they need to be a horizontal otherwise this center line will not be constrained okay now sure that I look straight to it I want to space them for whatever space is specified so from here to here I will space them at let's say a six inches part And I'm now going to make this also center line to be a high to be a height of the five inches what will be the height of our second cylinder body. Five inches. Now second cylinder will be very simple. We will infer the horizontal relationship and we'll draw the rectangle. We are going to dimension now in a relationship to the center line and this will be from here to here and the diameter will be a 3 the inner diameter the inner diameter will be 1 and a quarter inch 1.25 And let's see now what is still not constrained. And is this one? So essentially the verticals are not constrained. So what we need to say is that this one and this one are equal and that will constrain part of it. The other problem is we need to bring this one and this one, actually this point and this point should be horizontal. If we click on a horizontal, as you can see, now the sketch is fully defined. Now the interesting thing that will happen is when we rotate, when we try to build the revolution, we will have a two bodies. You will see that it will show the multi-body parts. So, as we, it in fair is correct, the moment we create this, we have now a multi-body part. So you see that the new folder in a parametric tree showed up, which is called the solid bodies, and it showed the solid body for part. 
So this part, the key for the successful pass of the Certified SOLIDWORKS Professional Part 1 exam is to build that as a multi-body part and only to do the union at the end because the whole exam will progress from making a one part into another. So you will modify the first into a second and the moment you make a mistake everything from there on is wrong. So also what we will need to be sure is that we linked the dimensional values in those. So and we will link them by giving like the exactly the same name. Again, which one we will link depends on how your question is structured, what is A, B, C, and if some of them are the same, or if there is a formula. How to link this? Links are in the annotations. So, and if we click on the annotations, we should enable the display annotation and if we click again we should also enable show features annotation. So this will help us as we build the part and to infer the relationships. So what we can do now we can see that there are some okay there is a 1.25 and there is a 1.25 here relationships which are the same so what we can do by holding a control key we can choose those dimensions and we can give them the same name so if we right click on one of them, then we can choose the linked values. Link value will be here. And we will call this, for example, what we can call the ID holes or inner diameters. Let's call them the ID holes. This is really cool because what you created now, you see here, there is a sign like a little links. So anytime you change a one, the other one will change. Which one you link depends on how your drawing look like and how it is specified. In your exam, it may say like this is a dimension A, and then this may be a dimension A, or it may be a dim dimension A times, let's say 1.5 whatever so you will link if if there is some transformation of the dimensions we will use the equations and we are going to cover equations soon okay dimensions to show you go to annotation right click on the mouse menu and then you will click on display annotation in this menu which opens so left click on a display annotation likewise if you want them to disappear you will click again there and they will disappear click right click display annotation now we are going to build the third piece of the multi-body part and we can either merge it or we can keep it unmerged in this case actually we will show what will happen in both yeah. cases so essentially this piece will be connecting the two bodies. So let's go back to our eyes of you. Now we are going to place a sketch. Again we will place the sketch on a front plane. We will place the sketch on the front plane and we are going to sketch the profiles. Before we do, we want to enable the temporary axis. So let's go to the view menu. And if you go to a view menu, you have here something that is called the temporary axis. And if you enable that option, it will show you the axis through any part with a cylindrical symmetry. And it will show you like those axes which are consumed by parts. So instead of redrawing them over and over again, let's reuse them. The whole concept of advanced modeling in a SOLIDWORKS reuse as much as you can entities and link them all together.
have that way you build the intelligence into a model. So we can start here. Let's say we know that some features will be called inner with the inner diameter edge. So let's go here on the view. Maybe we go like with this hidden line view. So if this is called linear with the linear with the inside edge, let's just click on it on that projection. And if you go in a convert entity and you click intersection curve and I select this one, however, that will not work in this case. Let's see if I go convert entity, if it will go into conversion. Okay. Silhouette edge. So just convert entity, not the intersection curve, because the general, the global planes do not do the intersection. So just convert entity. Look, it has converted it to a collinear line. Now we are going to do the same things here. So I will choose this one and I will convert it. And then I will close this guy here. Now what I'm going to do somewhere coincident with this I will make a line horizontal line and I'm going to dimension I'm going to distance the tip of that line of the this point of the line from the temporary axis from the cylinder axis and this distance will be a 2.5 Now I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to make a line from here going outward. I'm going to make the distance from this point of the line to the temporary axis in this example to 1.061. You see that actually it is lesser than the diameter of the cylinder. I'm going to connect the bottoms of the two. And I'm going to connect this two with a circle. And I can use the three point circle. I will choose the one point to be here. Another point here. Presses and then make the circle in this direction. I will be sure that this point and this circle, let's see actually, let's do it again. I want to make the circle which will be touching those two points. So maybe actually it will be a simpler to do it like this, just to make first a circle. Dimension it. Diameter is 8. So the radius is 8.550. So diameter will be two times 8.75. Now what I will do? I will move this circle upwards. Let's move with this circle. move the circle up. Now what I can do to fix that circle in a space, I know that this point and this circle will be and the circle will be coincident. That will put down the circle through this point and now this circle need to be tilted a little bit. And how I'm going to tilt it? I'm going to choose this point and I'm going to choose this point and I'm going to choose the there is a, this one and I'm going to say again that they are coincident and 
there is really only one distance at which this condition can be satisfied. So actually, let's see something else. What else we have here missing? There is a collinearity with an edge. Is there any dimensions up there? Looks like we don't have a fully defined model here. However, See if we can find that dimension. There will be a dimension D also specified, which is not in my book what is actually a printing error. So what we can do here we can assume some dimension based on the distance. We can assume that you see this one actually can go up and down. Oh, okay. This dimension. We assume that the circle and this line here based on the drawing, we don't actually need this dimension based on the drawing. We want this circle and this edge to be tangent and that will constrain it fully. There it is. So you really need to be careful in reading this drawing. You see it's still underdefined because of the axis. However, if we do some trimming, let's trim this guy here. Power trim. Let's trim it here. Let's trim it here. And in order to fully, fully define this, all what we will need to do is need to specify this is a fully defined point. We will need to link it with the origin somehow, and we will say that this one and this one or that this point and the point of the origin is collinear. So all what we need to do horizontal still underdefined. Let's see what else will be. Any ideas why this is underdefined? Well, it is a one of the sketches, but that sketch is somewhere here. This looks like actually fully defined for me. There is a one more distance missing somewhere. Let's see, the ideally we will have just a relationship from here. That's not correct. We can always go to the fully defined sketch. All entities in sketch calculate. And it was this relationship here. And now it is fully defined. So anytime you are not completely sure, there is this entity here. And that was the collinearity with the edge which was missing and it was virtually impossible to find it by yourself. So, here is the body number three, actually the connector. And this connector will be extruded from the mid plane. So let's go now to build it by extrusion, extruded boss. We will choose our thing. We will choose the option mid plane and it will be in a particular model 0.75. Here is the option for a merge result. Let's see if we leave that option what will happen. 
Remember that previously we had a box. And let's go back to the shaded view. We had here a box which was showing us bodies. This box have disappeared because with the merged result option, the three bodies are merged together. However, if we go back and if we unclick it, let's see what will happen. Now you have a three solid bodies. Sometimes you want to merge them. Sometimes you want to continue building on a three separate entities. Depends on the design intent and depends on the structure of your part until you do the final part. This will be like an example of a question one <coughs> in your certified SOLIDWORKS professional exam. From there on, next question will be to do certain modifications. Usually what it will ask you is to get like the mass. So how you will get the mass properties? You will go to a tools, mass property, and mass in this case is like 13.98. In a continuation of this exercise, we will continue building the next feature, which is usually a question number two, and that will be...